Well, hello again. I'm James from Zygal Studios, and welcome to another Embedded Talk video. So basically, I want to talk about, pretty short to the point here, but kind of get you guys rolling. Uh, some other things I've seen in the comments of my videos is, what do I need to get kind of rolling in the embedded systems world? What should I learn? What should I do? So typically, I hear, uh, so I'll give you a few, a few kind of tips here. But typically, I hear a few things, and I don't necessarily like them uh, as starters. But we'll kind of start with there. So the first thing is typically you'll hear, start with Arduino or Raspberry Pi. I'm not too keen on that because it's not particularly realistic in the sense of what you're actually going to be doing. It's a good Kickstarter into the field itself. So like, let's say, I don't know, you've spent a lot of time in the computer science uh, education realm and you haven't really gotten a chance to get your hands on with real hardware. Yes, absolutely. It's a great place to start. But I would start working with like an STM32 discovery kit uh, if you've had more experience with it, and start programming in C. Those two things, uh, in STM Discovery, or you can, I mean, you, there's microtrip development kits, any development kit that has breakout boards where you can, you know, put wires on and connect them to peripherals or hook them up to oscilloscopes is really the big deal. Um, so that's, that's number one, is learn how to program in C and also use real microcontrollers that you would use, let's say, in the job, because that's going to help you the most. No one, particularly if you're working on an embedded project and you want to get a job, saying you've worked with an Arduino is a good start, but typically there is an, is an urge for maybe wanting some more detail in that area. Uh, the second thing I would say primarily is to uh, have a strong background in C, C++, and assembly. Uh, assembly, not so much anymore. It's more of a cultural thing. You know, assembly is not really acceptable anymore, but C and C++ for sure. Uh, make sure those tools in your tool belt are sharp and that you're able to kind of rattle things off like that. A lot of things in the embedded platform with C programming, uh, like pointer magic and things like that, you're going to find a lot of bizarre things, uh, and that's fine if, you, if you're not used to that. But you should at least know the basics of how pointers work and also uh, you have to think in terms of um, limited memory space basically. Uh, you can't do things like recursion, it's kind of evil in the embedded space, especially with the limited memory you know, areas and if there's no virtual memory on your microcontroller, which is very common, uh, things like recursion are just not realistic. Uh, so you want to stick to a more like a limited memory mindset, so to speak. But you want those C and C++ tools to be sharp. And the knowledge of assembly, just in case you need to look at the assembled code uh, from the compiler, if there's a performance issue, or uh, let's say you want to take a deep dive into how this thing's actually working. Uh, the next thing I would really recommend is absolutely contribute to your tool belt again with digital signal processing. So a good example of this is like, let's say you're, I don't know, filtering in or you're sample, excuse me, you're sampling in some type of analog signal, whether it's, I don't know, current and voltage reading, for example. Uh, you can't just take these values digitally coming straight off the wire from the, uh, from the A to D because they're too unstable. You don't want to be able to making things making decisions on things in real time without filtering them first. And a good knowledge of but even just finite impulse response and infinite impulse response filters uh, for, with basic DSP is necessary for designing something like this. So brush up on your DSP skills, especially specific basic kinds of filtering because they're absolutely necessary for this. An absolutely must too, the next thing is know how to use tools effectively. So in embedded, a lot of things can go wrong. Uh, since you're working with electrical signals, basically just moving up and down uh, with serial communication or with the peripheral, you want to make sure that what you're sending out over the, the pins or the wire is exactly what you had designed for originally. And this could be with communication like with I2C or UART, or it could be a pulse width modulation signal, PWM signal coming off your wire. And you need to be able to use things like oscilloscopes or even in some cases to analyze more complex circuitry, network analyzers, to make sure that you have the exact behavior and software that you've specified and designed for. So make sure you know how to use an oscilloscope, make sure you know how to use a network analyzer. Uh, even in some cases, a spectrum analyzer will be necessary for, more, like I said, more complex circuit design. Uh, but you should know how to at least use the basics of a network and uh, analyzer and oscilloscope. Absolutely. Um, if a communication peripheral isn't working for some reason and you don't know why, you can't just throw your hands up in the air and say, well, I don't know what's going on. No, you have to figure it out. And usually that means hook up an oscilloscope to it, see what the signal is coming off the wire. 
And the last thing is, is make sure you have, like I said, a good grasp on the fundamentals. So learn what serial communication is, learn what uh, a DMA is, uh, you know, go over those protocols, go over the basics of the system. Um, like I said, this is where Arduino is really not going to help you much. A lot of that stuff is abstracted away. It's to get you used to interacting with hardware. But once you're comfortable with that, you need to start getting used to things like the I2C standard, the UART uh, and USART type communication systems. Uh, you know, th stuff like that is more important than, uh, you know, I guess putting things together with Arduino, which is a great start. But... If you're already at that point where you're comfortable with hardware, start digging into the nitty gritty details. And this is where these discovery kits are gonna be very helpful. And in fact, uh, STM32 Cube is a great application to get started to configure and generate code to configure your peripherals. Um, and that's another thing, make sure you understand what those peripherals do first. But thanks everybody. I hope this was helpful to you. If it was, please leave a comment below. And also, uh, if there's anything else you want me to talk about in the future, please leave it in the comments below as well. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. This is James from Zygal Studios, signing off.